believers. They come in all forms and all ages and all genders. They have faith in a multitude of theologies and practice those faiths in a number of ways. This project explores three of those faiths, mainstream Christianity, Buddhism, and Native American spirituality of the Oglala Lakota. Christianity is guided by a set of tenets that are based on the life of Jesus Christ. Followers of Christianity believe this is where God himself entered time and space in the form of a human being. Jesus Christ was born the son of Mary, a virgin who immaculately conceived Jesus after an angel appeared to her in a dream and foretold the baby's birth. This holy event is celebrated on the well-known holiday, Christmas, or Christ's Mass. Jesus was raised as a Jew by Mary and her husband Joseph. Throughout Jesus' 33 years on earth, he performed miracles, healed and cured the sick, and garnered attention to these acts on the part of people who had long awaited the coming of the Promised One, a Messiah, who would deliver people from the captivity of sin. Jesus' ultimate sacrifice for mankind was his death by crucifixion on the cross, done to pay for all of man's sins, followed by his eventual resurrection, back to life three days after he was declared dead and buried. The roles and involvement of women in Christianity has been dynamic throughout history. It can be said that women in the Old Testament were generally viewed in a restrictive, limiting way, where their movements and actions in public, their style of dress, and their ability to hold positions of authority were under high scrutiny or prohibited. Yet despite the restrictions, there were still those females, considered leaders, whose stories of being chosen and anointed by God also appeared in the Old Testament. Perhaps most aggressive for his day was Jesus himself, as his treatment of women was considered radical and resistant to the laws in his culture when he would treat women with kindness and compassion, making rationalizations for their behaviors, and elevating them to a more equal status with men simply by speaking to them as a beloved child of God. In present-day Christianity, the role of women remains just as dynamic as when Jesus walked the earth. Some mainstream denominations restrict women in leadership roles, prohibiting women from serving in a leadership capacity or as a teacher, where others allow women to be in roles of leadership such as bishops, pastors, and administrators. Worship is typically defined as an act of religious devotion, usually directed toward a deity, and in the case of mainstream Christianity, the deity is God. However, for Christians, worship is more than just devotion. It's in response to the gracious activity of God through Jesus. Worship practices in Christianity vary greatly, however common elements can be found. Most prevalent in commonality is to hold worship services on a Sabbath day, such as Sunday. While originally only held for sacramental gatherings, Christian worship services now include elements such as the Lord's Prayer, benedictions and doxologies, and singing of hymns. In ancient days, worship was held in tents or temples. Today, traditional worship services are held in designated buildings, which vary in size, architecture, design, and seating capacity, and contemporary style worship services can even be seen on outdoor settings as well. Mainstream Christians hold varying beliefs regarding salvation and the means to which a person comes to their afterlife. While all Christians believe there is salvation afforded through belief in Jesus Christ, some subscribe to the notion that it is through good works here on earth that one earns their way into favor with God and will be granted eternal life. Still others believe that heaven awaits for those because God's grace was extended through His Son's death on the cross, and their faith is all that is needed. The afterlife is perceived to be a place and a time where Christians are reunited with the saints, or those Christians that have already died. This place, often called heaven, is also a place where people are made new again and will be set free from any suffering or pain from their life on earth. Buddhism is a religion based on a set of teachings focusing on compassion, kindness, and self-sacrifice. Buddhism's ultimate goal is to receive enlightenment about life, not to follow a single deity. The origin of Buddhism is based on the historic Buddha named Siddhartha Gautama, who was born in the 5th or 6th century BC. Buddha's homeland was Nepal, India, where Buddha was a prince from the Seka clan. Venturing beyond the palace walls into town one day, Buddha encountered the sick, the old, and the dying, and a beggar causing him to reflect on the suffering of nature. Truly seeking liberation from samsara, or the cycle of repeated birth, existence, and dying, Buddha subjected himself to, among many things, severe ascetic practices, all of which were found to be useless in finding true liberation. 
After spending a period of time under a Bodhi tree, Buddha was fully awakened with a fully cleansed mind. At the age of 35, Buddha began teaching men and women from all classes who would listen about what he discovered through his experiences. While many Buddhas existed before and after Siddhartha, he was seen as a teacher and a leader and thus considered to be the beginning of Buddhism. While originally not allowed to be ordained leaders, women were eventually welcomed by Buddha to become nuns in the ordained community called Sangha, but were required to follow a set of specified rules, which still relegated women to an abject inferior position compared to men. Some examples of rules that Buddhist nuns must follow include nuns always having to bow to monks. A nun is not to spend time in the rainy season in a district in which there are no monks and nuns must not abuse, revile, or admonish a monk. Although Buddhists do not recognize a single god, they still engage in worship practices. These worship practices are more gestures of respect, therefore worship indicates admiration for persons and things. The nature of Buddhist worship is to express gratitude to the Buddha for what the teachings have given Buddhists, while Buddha followers are reminded of the influence of virtue, the light of knowledge, and to develop peace and love within themselves. Worship takes place in temples with worship participants sitting barefoot on the floor facing the Buddha icon. Prayers and chants of religious texts are sometimes accompanied by musical instruments. The Aposeta is considered the Sabbath day in Buddha worship, occurring once a week in accordance with the four lunar moon phases. To Buddhists, death is not the end of life, it is merely the end of the body they inhabit in this life, but their spirit will still remain and seek out through the need of attachment, attachment to a new body and new life. Exactly where they will be born is a result of the past and the accumulation of positive and negative action, because Buddhists believe in karma or intentional action. So good actions will result in a better rebirth, while bad actions will have the opposite effect. Depending on the actions performed in previous lives, rebirth could be as a human, or animal, or even ghosts or gods. Thus, to Buddhists, all life is in a cycle of death and rebirth, which is called samsara. The supreme aim of Buddhism is to obtain nirvana, or enlightenment, which is the escape from samsara. Spirituality for Native American people varies greatly by tribes and peoples. However, central to all their beliefs is the honoring of the land and all that inhabits it. Other foundations of Native American spirituality include love, honor, community, and respect for one's elders. Animals, particularly buffalo, are held in high regard as the youngest brother to creation and the closest non-human relative. For Oglala Lakota, Practicing a blend of early tribal traditions with Christianity is common. One deeply held belief is the origin of Lakota emerging on earth through the wind cave. Another important part of Oglala traditions is the sacred pipe, used to carry messages via smoke to the Great Spirit. Visions and dreams carry a great deal of significance for Lakota, which produce songs that are passed down from generation to generation and are used for religious expression. The Black Hills are considered Lakota's sacred land, and despite those beliefs, the Lakota were once prohibited to practice traditional ceremonies, dances, or celebrations on those sacred lands by the U.S. government. Christianity was introduced to the Oglala Lakota during assimilation, at which time Episcopal and Catholic churches set up schools and missions. Today, the Native American church, along with other Christian churches, are found as places of worship for many Oglala Lakota people. The Oglala Lakota live in a matriarchal society where women are held in very high regard as the giver of life. Women were historically critical to a tribe's success, handcrafting everything the tribe's people would need. The home was considered to be the woman's, as men took more political roles as chiefs and leaders. Female gender references even exist as Oglala refer to the land and creation as Mother Earth. Females are also the center of a sacred ceremonial rite held after a girl's first menses and performed to say prayers to ensure she will grow to have all the virtues of a Lakota woman. Traditional worship practices still used today by the Oglala Lakota include powwows, sun dances, healing dances, and sweat lodges. Powwows are traditionally held to bring together people to celebrate old friendships 
and make new ones through singing, dancing, and visiting. The Oglala gather every summer to worship and dance. The sun dance is the largest known and is one of the seven sacred ceremonials of the Sioux. It takes place in July and August. Sweat lodges are considered a religious ceremonial event for the Oglala to renew life, even though lodges are a mere fraternal gathering for other Native American tribes. Oglala also gather to pay homage and honor those who have been loved and lost as well, notably those lost in major battles with the United States government at Bighorn and Wounded Knee. Native American beliefs also vary about afterlife from tribe to tribe. The Lakota people believe that after death, the deceased person's soul will go to the happy hunting ground, a realm that resembles the world of the living, but with better weather and more plentiful animals that are easier to hunt than they were in the world of the living. As varied and different as these three religions and spiritual practices seem, they carry one thing in common. They each have believers who hold tight to the practices born centuries ago, find solace and comfort in those traditions today, and look forward to a life after their time here on earth. What comfort there is in believing.